Alright everyone, welcome to day 17 of the advent of code 2019 in Erlang through some ad hoc unedited video. If you've watched video 16, uh, despite my brightest and strongest warnings, uh, you know I've had a great time with it, uh, feeling like I was failing a whiteboard job interview because I didn't know the secret sauce for everything. Uh, but you should also notice that uh, since computer programming is a kind of um, perpetual pain generating machine of some sort, this doesn't mean that I will, that I will stop doing these. So we'll go back to uh, day 17, which has the great property that really feels makes me feel good about things, that it is not the day 16. Um, furthermore, it is in between planets again. Um, so I suspect that we might get encode and let's see what we have. All right. Oh, an early warning system detects an incoming solar flare and automatically activates the ship's electromagnetic shield. Unfortunately, this is cut off the Wi-Fi for many small robots that, unaware of the impending danger, are under trapped on exterior scaffolding on the unsafe side of their shield. Oh. To rescue them, you'll have to act quickly. I don't think this is going to be possible. Um, the only tools at my disposal are some wired cameras and a small vacuum robot currently asleep at its charging station. Video quality is poor and vacuum robots has needlessly bright LED LED that makes it easy to spot no matter where it is. Uh, an encode program, the after scolding ASCII, hoo hoo hoo, clever, provides access to the cameras in a vacuum robot. Currently, because vacuum robot is asleep, you can only access the cameras. Running, okay. Okay. Running the ASCII program, your encode computer will provide the current view of the scaffolds. This output is purely considering the ASCII code, 35 means blah, blah, blah. Okay, so they're using the character points for their format, which is nice. In the camera output, uh, the pound sign represents a scaffold and the point represents open space. The vacuum robot is visible as, okay, the carrot V is less than or greater than, depending on whether it is facing up, down, left, or right, respectively. Which are like this is always on a scaffold. If it is outside the scaffold, it becomes a big capital X. In general, the scaffold forms a path, but it sometimes loops back into itself. Okay, so I can see this. Does it loop that way and that way, or does it loop that way and that way? Uh, okay, it's sitting on a kind of well. Yeah, that's the robot. Continues up, loops across itself several times and ends at the top left here. Okay. The first step is to calibrate the cameras by getting the alignment parameters of some well-defined points. Okay. So first step is to make sure that you actually know where things are overlapping, which means that the second section is probably to have the thing walk over it, but you won't know which order they are, and I'm guessing we're gonna have to do some backtracking, but we'll see once we reach that point. Um, Okay, edge top, area intersections from above the mark is zero. Okay, or the capital O. Uh, for these intersections, the top left intersection is two units from the left of the image and two units from the top of the image. Its alignment is two and two. Okay, so that's three for me, but I'm guessing it's zero, one, two. Uh, so that one here should be two, three, four, and two and four for it. Yeah. The bottom left is two and four from the top. The bottom middle, okay, so that one is going by incrementing. So, uh, oops, I'm going to take just a little note. Uh, start at zero, down is plus one, right is plus one, because if I do them opposite with my tendency to put going up as being positive, I'm sure it's going to bite me in the ass. And so they want this, uh, okay. The bottom middle, okay, yeah, so it's a multiplication at like this. To calibrate camera, you need the sum of the alignment parameters of the above. Okay, I'm gonna get my puzzle input to priv day 17. And uh, we don't have examples, so advent input day 17, and this is going to be the okay. I always forget my API to my encode computer, which is going to be parse program. 
just because I've used so many variations of it with changing APIs. You'd probably hope that the, you know, Santa's space shuttle operation or something was not hanging by a thread the way it is right now, but well, you know, uh, you think he'd had had time to fix this over the years. Uh, where am I? Spine program and the program is going to be the program and the IO is going to be sure myself. Why not? I don't know yet. This is going to be the pin of the encode computer and I'm sure I'm going to have to control it later. Uh, I'm going to assume it requires, well, there it is. It asks for no input. It's just going to output stuff. So uh, on collect result, that means I'm done of the bid. And then I can, you know, uh, do I have a thing that just captures the IO? I don't. All right. Uh, I'm going to write it by hand. I don't know if I'm going to need it that many times. After zero, because we know the problem, the program is done running, we know we're done, that's the IO. And then the only thing I need to do is to IO format a string in output that's going to be collect of the IO. And this is going to generate me what is probably an IO string that I can just straight up return. Yeah, that's, uh, it's nice that I had one call with it done correctly and two done incorrectly. Um, collect IO is undefined. Oh yeah. Big arrow missing right here. I'm doing this one uh, at night, the night of day 17. So technically I'm almost caught up, but I'm sure I'm going to have to uh, stop before I'm fully done. So. Uh, at some point in the video, I'm going to pause and then come back with a very low, calm voice of me waking up in the morning. Nice, okay. So I got the thing. That's a pretty map. And now they want to know all the intersections. The intersections are going to be easy to find. Um, but I'm not sure that's what they're going to want me to do. Uh, the easy, easy way to find the intersections is to just find all the points that in a square have four of them in there, right? And um, I'm guessing that they will rather prefer that I actually format the whole freaking map and understand the thing. And I don't feel like rewriting everything from scratch a second time around. So um, I'm going to structure things such that uh, I do have an actual map representation in my thing. So uh, here I'm going to turn this this way. Uh, who cares? All right. And I'm calling it a map, but frankly, it's going to be just uh, a thing like that. I'm guessing that I will have to uh, mutate the val. There's a few ways I can represent this uh, cool little map. And so, oh yeah, I know that this is part of a map because otherwise it would be a big X. Um, I can represent that thing as a binary ribbon uh, where the entire output is just going to be one large binary and I have to figure out um, the line breaks by myself, uh, but I feel that, you know, a map might be actually a little sparser because I only need to parse all the points that I have in there. So I'm going to turn it to a map. And uh, since I'm starting with just the IO, it's going to be really easy when I'm to map of IO list is going to be to map of an IO list with nothing as an accumulator 
So when I'm done with the IO list, I can return just the map. And to be fair, it would probably be nice to have the current position, but I'm going to use the current position as a key uh, inside that map. So two map and um, uh, I'm going to know my position in X's and Y's. Oh, that might be interesting to carry around, wouldn't it? Why not? So, uh, oh, X core. Because I don't know if it's going to be useful, but it's cheap to carry around compared to all the rest. If what I have is point, uh, I'll probably want to uh, flatten the IO list and turn it to just a list. So um, actually, this is just a list in here. I'm guessing it's just sending all the points directly. So I'm going to not flatten it and hope for the best and only do the fixing I need to do and stop being so defensive about the code. So when I get this uh, chord and a map, I would go to map of T and uh, oh, this is going to be an X and Y. I'm going to go X plus one and Y of the same map. If what I get is, uh, let's start with this. I'm going to get the X and Y. Two map T, X plus one again, Y, and in this case map X, Y is to use the same terms we're using. Uh, close this thing. Let's call it H, X, Y, map. When H is either, let's start with this, or H is down. Is it a capital V or a lowercase v? Uh, where is the thing? Right, uh, is it? Oh, there, that's a lowercase v. All right. or h is equal to this, then y but also uh, the position is going to be x and y as well. And so I will be able to track the current person position in that one. Maybe I won't use it. Uh, that's going to be fine uh, to map and then we have the line break of X and Y and the map when H is equal to oh the max coordinate is not going to be exactly that right because I will probably increment my Y value on the last line of them all so it's going to be X and Y minus one for this. Um, right, H, right, map. Okay, that's going to be two map of T. X is going to be zero again. Y is going to be plus one. And the map is unchanged. And uh, I think 
this will be it for now. I'm going to have to deal with the little uh, exploding thing of, you know, the uh, the crashed probe. Uh, but I'll adapt that code if I need to. So let's see what this gives me. Yeah, well, why are you complaining? X is unused. Indeed, it is unused. Goodbye, a little drawing. We're going back to outputting this garbage. All right, that's good. Now I got my map. Um, what I got to do is mark intersections. And marking intersections, I'm going to use their exact notation for that. So I will start with the map and I will change all the these values that are the pound sign and I'm going to change them to be the capital O. So I will use uh, a maps fold function, I believe. Let me get back to uh, or like maps. Let's see if that brings me to the right documentation module. I believe so. Boom. Maps fold. Yeah, that's fortunate scrolling. <laughs> All right, fold. The function takes a key, a value, an accumulator, and the outdoor, the outside one. So, And I'm going to return a new map of the thing, I believe. Oh, do I have a different map function that I want? Wait a second. There's maybe one that uh, I would need to have something called just like maps map or something where I transform the value as I go. Uh, iterator would make sense with next and everything update with hmm let's see how could I do that one safely okay here's the thing I'm gonna do just made a decision so I'm going to use all the keys which is going to be maps keys of map and lists fold on the left for all of them. And for the way it's going to work is that for each uh, key in the map, I'm going to do a uh, little nice thing. And this is where like I like pattern matching for the sake of it. I'm going to use the original map as a fetching point for this one because it's going to be safe and easy to do. And uh, look at this guy. So this is going to be uh, X, Y position. And the thing I will, uh, it's annoying. I, I thought I could do it with pattern matching, but because I might get uh, here coordinates that are on the edge, I will look out of bounds for some of them. So I cannot do it safely with just pattern matching, which would have been, would have been really, really nice, but Okay, so I'm going to go with, you know, up is maps get x, y minus 1. Um, okay. I'm going to assume that all my maps are only coordinates with the value 35 for these, but this is not necessarily true. Ah. Uh, We'll see. We'll, we'll fix it in post. Uh, <laughs> from this, uh, and the default value is just going to be actually a period for something that doesn't exist in the map. Down is going to be this, left, and right. And let me update the positions now. So down is going to be plus one, left is going to be minus plus one like this and uh, okay S 
so how am I going to do that sweet little update um, all right if up is this down is this left is this oh well and right is this then x y has a value of oh no it's capital o because i want it to print fine and otherwise always a true condition then return the map as it is i'm also going to need an alternative function clause here uh, just for all the other keys and in in case of all the other keys i just uh, return the map as it is i'm going to uh, do my little cheat with the semicolon so it's obvious that i'm working on a different clause of this one and that's the fold function and uh, I'm going to fold it over uh, all the keys let's make it a bit more compact saving lines which are not critically endangered but what do you know Oh, actually that should be the map is the accumulator I believe and then the keys is what I'm iterating over and that will be marking all the intersections so Boom, it seems to work. Um, now what I need to do with the intersection is going to be, I'm going to uh, spot all of them by key. And uh, I will take only the key and the O value for maps to lists of this whole freaking thing. Now let's see what we get then. Boom! So we get a few of these. I'm assuming they're going to be correct. And then what I need to do is multiply both values from one to the other. So first, let's uh, grab this. I'm going to make it a bit clearer. All right. And then the key is always going to be uh, X and Y. So I can do X times Y and sum them up. And that should give me what I need. I do have a properly constructed map. Oh yeah. Map in here. Compiling part one, 4408. Let's see if that works. Hopefully it does. 4408. That worked! All right! And just in time before I'm done with actual day. Um, all right, part two. Now for the tricky part. Notifying all the robots about the solar flare. The vacuum robot can do this automatically if it gets into a range of a robot. However, you can't see other robots on the camera, so you need to be thorough. You need to make the vacuum robot visit every part of the scaffold at least once. Sure, the vacuum robot is normal, normally wanders randomly, but there isn't time for that today. Instead, you can override its movement logic with new rules. Force the vacuum robot to wake up by changing the value in your ASCII program at address 0 from 1 to 2. When you do this, you will be automatically prompt for the new movement rules that the vacuum robot should use. Okay, so we're going to drive the robot interactively again. When you do this, you will automatically be prompt for the new movement rules that the vacuum robot should use. The ASCII program will use the input instructions to receive them, blah, 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 but they need to be provided as the ASCII code. Oh, there's a little thing here um, that I did in uh, creating my map with a cursor when I had my position. I'm going to also uh, store the value H so I know the orientation that I have if I'm going up, down, or whatever. Okay, because otherwise I will need probably to turn the robot or some shit. Uh, first, you will prompt the main movement routine. The main routine may only call the movement functions A, B, or C. Wait, we can call functions? As ASCII text. Nice. Separating them with commas. Okay. 
and ending the list with a new line. Uh, oh, I can call all the freaking list. To call A twice, then alternate between B and C three times. A, A, B, C, C. Oh, that's nice. Makes it easy to schedule things. Then you will be prompt for each movement function. Okay. Movement functions... Uh, all right. Okay. Wait. Main movement routine. So I have movement functions. I don't know what these do yet, right? Uh, I'm not okay. I got zero and two. That's all right. Then you'll be from each movement function. Uh, the movement function may use L to turn left or right to turn right or a number to move forwards that many times. Is this like A B? And C, I don't know. Movement functions may not call other movement functions. Or am I defining? Wow. Again, separate the actions with the commas at the list. And you have things to move forward 10 units, 10 units, turn left, move forward 8 units, turn right, and finally move forward 6 units, provide a string 10 left. Okay. That's like a little turtle robot, which I've never used, but they're kind of nice. You will be asked whether you want to see a continuous video feed. Provide either yes or no and a new line. Okay. Enabling the continuity feed can help you see what's going on, but it also requires significant amount of yeah. The SQ definition of the main routine, the movement function, at most 20 characters. Okay, plenty of rules. I have a feeling I'll tackle that tomorrow morning, but I'm still reading these two. It's actually a good thing because then I can digest that stuff while I sleep and I probably will come up with a decent solution in my sleep, hopefully. Um, which is nice because then I get to work without making the effort of it. Um, consider the following camera feed. Yep. Alright. I get it. So I'm guessing that one of the things I will do is probably go as far ahead as I can on any of these. And if I find an intersection, they seem to be destined to work kind of nice on a single path and not too many forks. One path could take is R8, yep, turn right because it's up, R8 down, R4, yeah, blah, 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 blah. That's all right. Without the memory limit, you could just supply this whole string to function A and have the main routine call A once. However, you'll need to split into smaller parts. Main routine. A, B, C, B, A, C. Nah, I'm... Oh, I'm programming the computer. Nice. Okay, that's pretty cool. Oh, oh, but that's going to be hella tricky to get right. So you need to... Dang. Okay. So there's a repeating pattern that exists in some of these. I probably need to break out the entire string. And then it's going to be more or less a combinatorial problem in figuring out the entire stuff. Oh, nice. Okay. I don't know how I'm going to do that one. Uh, there's probably going to be some form of recursive search. I will need to find components of the things that are as long as possible, but shorter than a given amount of them, and then break them up and find ways to repeat them. Um, there's probably a kind of string processing mechanism about that, about matching substrings or something. Okay. They drew the entire thing, A, B, C, B, A, C. So you start here, and A is actually, well... Yeah, okay, so A is 8 to the right, and they don't consider the curse. Oh, it's already on that point, so you don't need to visit it again. How nice. All right. Right, 8. Right, 8. Oh, yeah, that's a turn. Then it's going for B. It's R4. 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 And R8, C is going to be left, oh, F2, B, 
R4, R4, R8. Yeah, that's still the same same pattern. Interesting. Okay. As the vacuum robot finds other robots and notifies them of the impending, so it also can't help but leave them squeaky clean, collecting any space dust is fine. Oh, okay. Interesting again. So not only, not only do I need to figure out the program it needs, uh, but I need to run it and then collect the output. I think we can do that one without outputting anything. Um, but frankly, just handling that stuff is going to be kind of annoying. Although, you know, this is a turn left and Oh wait, oh that's the opposite direction from this one. That might be the same sub pattern. Interesting. So um, I will focus on drawing the long string of the program uh, first because my feeling is that I need to have the entire long string before I can start breaking it out in sub parts. There might be a tricky bit where you know you move, you don't turn anything and you just continue the pattern, but they seem to be very regular in their length. Um, and I don't know that I'm going to need to do anything about that. So uh, I'm going to start with the same map I had here. I'm not going to mark the intersections because I don't think I need them. Uh, I will instead create path. And I'll put that and see whatever I can. So I will start at, uh, I'm just giving it the map. Create path, I'm going to start at um, you know, position orientation is going what I have in the uh, pause key. Which I clearly can't do here. I'm just going to call it the direction. And uh, I'm going to go with direction. The position is what I want first, and then I have the map. And I'm going to accumulate all of that stuff. So when I'm okay. Direction pause map act. So I'm going to get my next point. So I'm going to get that. Uh, forwards is going to be rather straightforwards. Uh, if I have this and x, y, it's just going to be x and y minus 1 because I'm going down. Oh, no, I'm going up. So yeah, yeah, that's that's a thing. And when this one goes down. It's going to be x, y plus 1. And four words to a smaller point of x, y. Okay. Now, um, if what I have in in the map, and I have empty space as a default of empty point, then I need to figure out if I turn left or 
right. I don't know how I'm going to do this right now, but if I get it that way, then I just keep going. And so I will create path of um, direction, next position, map. And here I'm going to add the you know forward instruction with a capital F. Uh, towards that way uh, with the accumulator, and that's going to be the end of it. Uh, I don't think we ever get a T junction in what we have, uh, only when we cannot go forwards anymore. So I can do an easy check of uh, and then that's the direction and that's the position. I'm going to make the same one for the rightmost position. And uh, yeah, I don't know if I need to favor one or the other, so screw this. I'm going to make both. And the reason I'm going to do this is just because I want to have a bit more compact code. It's not as effective or anything else, but if I do get a point and here I get this, then I know that logically um, I create that there to uh, the right map. And here I'm going to have the forward position after going right. Is this what they use? Yeah, right and left. I'm just going to do a run, a run length compression after the fact where all the consecutive Fs are going to be replaced by uh, equivalent digits. And so I'm going to do this that way, swap it. And if I don't get one of these two patterns, I'm guessing that I've messed up something. And I'm going to fix it that way. Oh, wait. No, I don't know what that was. Oh, I'm going to rotate again. Who cares? It's probably cheap compared to running the rest of the thing. And that's the end of that one. So now I need to do right or left. So right of this is this. Right. And right. and going left on this is down. I think that's about it for this one. So let's see what we get on P2 for this. Hmm, line 73, I get 46, 46. Oh, that might be my last position. That's when I finish going. Uh, I believe that 46 is probably just two empty spaces. Yep, I haven't thought of this base case. I'm done. When I reach this, it means that I'm finished on my entire map. So I will need to 
my accumulator because I'm done. And that's what I returned. That doesn't seem right. <laughs> what the hell? Oh. <sighs> right, forwards, forwards. So what did I do? I turn right and forwards and for. Yeah. Okay. That there's definitely a problem with this one. I don't want to turn more than once because that's a 180 degrees and that means I'm going back on my step. Next position is there, the left, right, on the forwards is this. Mm. And I keep the accumulator fresh on each one of these. Here it's also kept. Okay. You know what that means. It's tracing time. Calls to day 17. And I will want to have the create path function traced. And it's going to suck because it has a huge map of arguments which I think I can elide, there's a feature for that, that uh, someone from Erlang Solutions contributed, I believe. Um, if I need, I'll go fetch that one, but we'll see. Boom, okay. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, let me see what is the recon function to. Okay, so I want to look at my source code a bit. There's a module called recon map uh, is active. False. There's a way to turn it on. That's probably uh, just by processing the map, I guess. And when I turn that one on, the arguments required are, oh, no, no, no. Process map is an internal function that is an internal export for something. It should be a limit, and the map will be called. The map will be called. Uh, let's call it just. You know, it's a map for a map. That's the label I'm giving it. The pattern I need to match for this. Uh, I think this is supposed to be a function. Where I will return. I will return. Uh, I think is key and if it has the position key then I know it's the map I have and I can say don't print anything about this map I believe and so now it should be active and when I call the calls again and I trace oh yeah that's true that's not an actual <laughs> Okay, now we'll limit it again. And trace it. Oh god, that's not what it's supposed to return. So what is the filter? It's active. Yeah, it's a definition for the map. What is the thing again? Oh, I think that the thing is that this means that I'm limiting none of the field. I want to limit all of the fields. Um, and trace the thing. Yes, this is much clearer. Also, there's some broken input output for this one. Uh, that's probably a bug that will need addressing. But 2014. 21.4. Yeah, going forward doesn't lag. Then it goes right. Forwards, that should be fine. Uh, 
I'm not sure I understand why I'm getting it. So, well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take this giant clown of a map. And I'm going to just copy the hell out of it into a buffer so I don't need to scroll all the time. Uh, the big yellow selection here, that's the Tmux copy-pasting that's going on. Uh, just a new tab in paste mode and then pasting the buffer in there. Okay. Uh, set no number in this one, please. I think I keep numbers elsewhere. Yes. So what I got as a result here was right, which runs it forwards and forwards. And then why is it complaining? Oops. Uh, am I missing up my forwards and backwards things? Forwards on the left. Forwards on that direction is minus one. Going up, it's towards the zero. Going down, it's towards the plus one. That should be fine. Going right, that's turning fine. That's turning fine. That's turning fine. And that's turning fine. Going left, yes. Let me reorder the clause so they're kind of easier to read. That's still going. Then down, then down to run, run up. That should be fine. Hmm. Here the direction isn't changed. Here the direction is indeed changed. is going on on these so I'm going to also trace more stuff I'm also going to get maps get and I want the trace for this to be returned no buddy I'm supposed to be filtering these Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Those <laughs> are probably related to uh, a specific process ID. God damn it. I'm going to uh, be a bit more strict in what I trace. So I'm always tracing something requiring these two values. I don't care for the map. And here it's always a period at the end. Here we go. Because I was getting probably the map star being used by the shell somewhere to store, for example, the process history and everything. Um, and so, all right, uh, 46 is, let me create a thing, I'm just going to, 46 is the period, that's the one I don't care about. Then I get, uh, okay, I create the first bat. I start at 2014 and I'm pointing towards 94, which should be up. That is correct. Okay, so that gives me a point. That doesn't work. It cannot move forwards. Then here I'm probably going to the left because I'm going to a 19. That will not work and will give me a point. Then I will turn to the right as the next attempt, and it will return me uh, 35. And 35 is my little thingy here, which is what I want, and that's good. So I will then operate from that way, and now I'm facing direction 60, and 60 should be going right. Oh, what? Did I swap these? Oh, that's the thing. Oh, god damn it. I swapped the direction. 
<sighs> okay. Compile. I, I knew it's from the directions because I was expecting to go the other way and it didn't. Boom. Play for a minute. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't care. Just play it again. So I've got what might be a reasonable pattern. Now, uh, the thing I will do is compress the pattern. And so, uh, the compression is going to be quite easy to do. I'm going to keep my directions lower. Compressed, uh, if I get something like left, uh, I keep something like left and then I compress the rest of the program. If I get something like right, then I keep the right and I compress the rest of the program. If I get a single freaking F, then I will count Fs uh, starting at one. Okay. Oop, I'm still in paste mode. I will count F um, starting at one from the tail. Sure. And uh, what I will expect to get is I want to get the F count and the new tail. All of this. And once I have that, then my function is going to be the F count and the new T. Uh, and compress the new T. And this is a common uh, parsing pattern that you will see used. Uh, thing I no longer need here is that if I'm only compressing these, then I can use just a placeholder for these. And that will be fine. And oops, compressing the empty list will return me the empty list for this. Uh, now counting the F's. I'm starting at one. I get some more F's in there. And so what I will do is count more F's. Now I'm at two and the T. And that's going to be the looping thing. Oh, that's going to be N. That's going to be N plus one. And I will stop whenever I meet either the end of the list, in which case, actually, I don't care if it's the end of the list or if it's just any other character than the F. So this is going to be the tail. I just return the N and the T. Now let's see what we get. This is going to be a bit different now. Boom! Unreadable garbage. So, oops. RP to. Uh, I keep pressing the control button. No. Oh, okay. I think they might actually want me to uh, return ASCII sequences. We'll see for that. So what I'm going to do for them, I'm going to just do the uh, integer to list and return something that they find a bit nicer. Um, I could also do the bit where they, you know, they want the commas to be there, but I'm not going to keep these until I do the actual big formatting for the final stuff because I don't need them. Uh, screw you. Okay. That's fine. I'm just going to plus plus these things. So they are flat in there. Boom. All right. Now, 
And this is interesting. How do we extract the cool patterns out of this? Uh, I'm going to... Uh, I should probably think about this, because there has to be an, in an interesting way to do it. And it's probably going to have to do with the longest or most common sequences that I can make. Um, there's clearly some repetition for... Nope. There's not that clearly some repetition. Um, one thing I can do then is going to be uh, my compre... Uh, I don't want to do it in the compression function. I'm going to have to here to break what I compressed and I am going to uh, the breaking is going to be done also while no I can't do it right away so I'm gonna break the string and an accumulator for all the breaking I've seen and um, I could probably do it yeah, I think I can do it with a regular expression let's do that um, and then I could split this on left or right followed by 0 9 plus in the oops I think I swapped the inputs and outputs Nope, oh, that was bad. All right, I'm uh, going to go to bed and let the brain work on this while I sleep. All right, so this is uh, the morning after I just took a sleeping break because it was night. And uh, my sleepy brain is not the best of workers because it has not found uh, the full solution. I'm going to get back into it, so... Uh, what was I doing? Breaking the string into something different. All right. So to break the string, uh, what am I going to do? I'm, I, I have to get back into it this morning. I literally wake up a few minutes ago. So I'm going to write what is, I assume, a kind of a state machine parsing thingy. Um, although I don't really need to uh, it would be the same kind of stuff as a compression I guess but maybe I could put it in there at the same time because when I look at my output each time I complete that stuff it's the same as having this yep so I'm going to Avoid the break and do it as part of the compression and replace compress as, uh, you know, just format the thing. And I'm going to do everything in there. Here we go. Uh, that, that should probably cover everything uh, and I think day 12 that's about it and then it's going to be easy to do something like this and this and now I got all my motions done easy um, now to pick all the little moves I have in ways that can break them. Right, it's already easy to see it by eye, right? That like this subsequence is exactly the same in a bunch of places. Namely the line right below it. Uh, and there's even the little R8 that comes right before it. So, um, one thing I'm going to do 
with this is um, we're going to use a straight up brute force attack. The input is super small, so I'm assuming that uh, that will be kind of relevant. And the thing I will want to do is probably pick a random point in there uh, of at least one element until something minus two. I want it to fit into two boxes. And I will put like uh, a kind of point or a cursor, I don't know, there in the between, and I will take that as a sublist. And then um, this will be my first group. Then the thing I can do is break the second list to remove all the instances of the first group in there. And uh, then do the same selection for a second point in there. That will give me the second and third group. And the search works if I'm able to cover all the points by doing this, all the options, then that lets me, that lets me know that um, I'm able to do something with it. Otherwise, I'm not quite sure if there's a good way to do it. I could probably do it without even dropping anything and just trying to put all the sections I need, but it would be a bit trickier. Um, I could look for what drops me the longest selection possible as well. Or I could just do it by hand. This is part two. I know I'm not going to need anything else either, but uh, yeah. Is R8, L12, R8 is here, but it's also R8, L12, R8 is also there. And we can see, like, let, let's play with it a bit. I had this one, I'll call my initial list this thing. Let's explore the properties of the thing we have. So I've decided that my group one was going to be this. Um, I would set that. Now to remove that subsequence from all of these, this is probably where I could use the re split function that I had. I uh, started looking where the pattern, the subject is first, and my pattern would be this. Yeah, it's G1. And here I could get this stuff. I wish I should drop like, I don't know if there's an option like not empty or something. Can't recall. Um, it should be in the RE module. And, um, split. And the option should be trim. Uh -huh, that's the trim option. Nope. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, there's a not empty. Or do they need to be put into something in core? No, that's a straight up option that I should be able to have. Trim as well. start but if I do both of these nothing all right oh, I'm not gonna fight this thing for super long So that gives me these tree groups. And then from there in this string, would I be able to pick another subsequence that would work with them? And so I could clearly pick this one. That's a leftover fragment. And actually that might be an interesting selection mechanism. Just pick one of them. And then if this is, you know, uh, that was L2. And I could decide that G2 is this little thing, which is how they 
Did I have them that way when well, my first pattern was, was what, what was G1 earlier? Yeah, G1 was broken up in subpart. So if I have G2, then I can take this little thing, G2 and L2, and then re that, that returns me this, which um, R12, LR810, you know, that, that seems to work very well. Pick one of the groups and then that automates the thing. And uh, so let's assume that this is my group three, uh, and this is the list three, and I can just iterate and oh yeah that's not l3 that's going to be this and then i know that i completed the whole thing uh because each subgroup i've taken was right uh that being said okay i can break them up that way that's gonna work And that would give me my ABC programs, essentially. Um, as long as I do that search, I can do that recursively. And then the hard part is going to figure out how I apply this pattern to return the program I need. And frankly, I could just have done it by hand here. It's clearly not difficult, and I can pass the problem right away. And maybe I will. Um, just to get it working. Uh, I will just store things in a comment because I know the solution I need already. So group one is this. Uh, L12, R8, group two was And group three was group three was not a strict thing. And the full list of the program was the full list is easy to obtain though. But yeah. So I can easily reapply all of these. Okay. And break. And I assume that this will return me, you know, A, B, and C. Those are going to be my three programs. So let's do this thing. Uh, I'm going to start with, I'm going to use here exceptions as control flow because it makes going deeply recursive kind of easier. And so I will use it to um, call a recursive function where I break the list starting at position one. Uh, and then I ensure that this thing is going to call itself recursively at some point. And uh, I will make even, you know, error not found. If this doesn't work, it will error out. And in the exceptions, I will throw a return exceptions, which will be um, the right return value, which I will return right away. And this will be done. Now, um, I can try the list at a given position, and the thing I will do is um, what was it? Lists, sublists of uh, the first list of string starting at position one because I want the first one to count some length or duration of patterns. Uh, until the position I have, and this will give me my group one candidate. Then the thing I will do is uh, the exactly what I did in the terminal because that seemed to work well. 
where I have the list and I split on the G1 candidate. Let me go copy paste that thing because I don't want to mess it up. Boom. I'm going to just call it straight up G1. I return the list, it is not empty. And this is going to be uh, and so I will break down further into uh, break two because yeah let's call it that way this is the first break I'm trying to do break one then I will go into uh, break two mode which will work on G1 and candidates, and then we'll work a different selection altogether. And here I know that I'm using exceptions for error flow. So actually, let me just return here. This is a bit aggressive, and I don't want to lose all my shell session each time. <clears throat> and so I will do the break two in the candidates, and it's going to do its own recursive search, and then. I can do break one of list of position plus one, and this one will eventually stop when you know break one. Uh, it will crash. <laughs> it will flat out crash when it runs out of positions to try, but it shouldn't because it will do a depth first search. So break the second group where I have the candidates, and here that one is um, kind of simpler because I will pick a random candidate in the list of, that I have. So when I was looking at L2 like that, I only have a few possible things to pick. And so I can pick each one of them rather easily. Um, but I need to do that recursively as well. So I will do a recursive function where I break G1 candidates and I will start at the first one. Here, this is something I also uh, did kind of messily, but you know, the, the, the argument for the accumulator is passed by the other color. And, you know, it's not perfect, but don't care. And so, here, the thing I will do is. Uh, G2 is going to be lists nth, and I believe this is the order. I don't believe the order of argument got nth. Okay, I'm going to have to go back up to that list. This is one of the things that is annoying with the text browser. So the nth argument on the list, I just want to know the first one is the count. So that would be an in candidates. And then I pick this one. And then it's the same split that I can do again, which is going to be uh, new candidates is going to be this, where I split them by group two. And uh, I'm going to use lists here instead of candidates. Let's save a bit of time. Okay. And so here's what I have. And then I can do a break three of G1, G2, candidates, and starting by one. And then I will so my also do my search in break two on G1 list and, and plus one, because that means my search didn't work. And break three is going to go with, again, G1, G2, list, ent. And so here's the last interesting part. I will have to do same mechanism here. Group three is going to be exactly this, exactly the same thing. 
And uh, here I had the thing on the third list, right? If I call the split, I expect to get an empty list at the end of the last group. I'm splitting up with them. And so, K's candidates. Okay, let me just K is the freaking whole expression here. And here's going to be G3 on the list of. And if what I have is an empty list, then return, well, throw. G1, G2, and G3. And that's the result of my computation. If there's anything else in there, then break three, G1, G2, list, and plus one, and the end of it. And, and that's the entire search. There is no stopping condition. I expect the uh, exception to be what I need. So it's going to be interesting to see if that works well. Oh yeah, that's break two here. Where's my problem now? Oh, yeah. Sure enough. Let's see if that works. That would be nice if it does. Um, I assume it might not, but D17, P2, list sublists. It's not sublists, it's. Uh, what did I do in day 16? It's list sublists. Oh, it's singular, I guess. Okay. Nth one. God. On lines one, two, three. Interesting. So I did not expect that. Yeah. So when that happens, I'm actually hitting a dead end in my search that I can't cope with. So I'm just going to say not found and that's going to curtail that. And I'm guessing I'm going to have the exact same thing on, geez, uh, break two as well. And then that lets me know what to do, but I don't have to do it on break one because that one is truly the last to happen no matter what. Oh, 127 again. But I'm already covering that case here. Come on. I'm already supposed to return. Is it loaded properly? On line 127 still, and then called by 121. 127 called by 121. I don't get <laughs> why it's not just matching in this case I have right here. It's... That's... Start from a fresh shell. What the hell? Okay, now that that's just plain weird. I'm supposed to entirely catch this case here because the list is empty and I should be returning not found. What the hell? Here, I'm returning it with this, break plus one, I don't care what it is. Oh. Break one and one element. Break two has been called there. I have the, oh. Uh, here, it should be, oh, I still call it with the list. In break two, and it's break three breaking in that one. It's 127, but yeah, no, I'm I'm totally dumbfounded 
like why is this not entering the other one I have in here and I'm going to start from a fresh build and see if that changes anything oh yeah has a few dependencies to refetch What the hell does it see for that? Yeah, okay, it has the right source. And why is it calling this function with the list that is empty when it clearly should be matching on this one? And the list is the second argument of that one where it breaks. What the hell? Is this a kind of compiler bug or something? Like, this is gonna blow. And it should have matched on the previous one because that's the only thing it's supposed to do. Or, oh, I think I get it. I'm getting it. This, uh, the error is unrelated. That's uh, Taylor Recursion speaking right now. This is gonna blow, and I'm just reading out of bounds for it. Uh, okay. So my search, because it's very, very aggressive at that point, is not going to work. Uh, that's a bummer. Okay, so when my nth value is longer than the freaking list itself, then I need to do that. I'm kind of annoyed that um, I have to do it differently. So. Hmm. This is going to be an inline check. Uh, I'm going to replace the lists and function by one where I do that validation. Yeah, I can't do it that way. Okay. Uh, all right, so. I'm going to have to carry it. I want to do it moderately efficiently, so I will have to, you know, um, I'm going to do something here. I'm going to do it until it's break to no, I'm just reversing how I'm doing this, where instead of building it that way, it's going to be negatively. That way I only calculate the length of the candidates once and go down effectively there. I'm gonna get compiler warning, and if I get zero, I get that found, and that's going to be needed here as well. And for the bottom here, I'm going to go down one for each of these. And now I should get something that makes a bit more sense. There we go. It's, oh, wait. Hmm. <laughs> I'm not sure that this is all right. It's not, uh... I don't No, that's not a valid sequence. Did I not break them by commas or something at first? Oh, God. I thought the formatting would have taken care of that. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm going to do it here. That's the thing I wanted. That otherwise, it's not going to be extremely bad. That works. Now that is something I can work with. Uh, all I need is to, you know, uh, flatten the value I have. And I will consider it an artifact of my function that I get ABC that way. So I'm going to do like 
then just return this. And now I have clean output out of this break function that is kind of funky, but does the right thing. So those are my A, B, and C programs. Um, I could use more, uh, because I have other constraints in terms of length of the instructions, right? If I recall. The movement function may each contain at most 20 characters. Uh, and the comma is part of them, if I recall. And those might therefore be too long, because if I do the length of this, it's 32. So I'm going to, to, to add more constraints. And ideally, I would keep my um, commas around, which I could easily do. I don't keep formatting things here. I'll add, um, so here, that first candidate was actually good for A. It's actually a list join that I want to do and flatten them. I think this is the syntax for it. We'll see what that gives me. And uh, I'll explain to you as soon as I get, oops, get the thing I want. Yep, okay. So this gives me uh, the string being joined that way. The thing I will want is to have the commas also as part of each. That will ruin my search though. Uh, I need to search with the commas in place so I can't split it that way. I get back to this. Now I have this monster of a thing, but each part when smaller than 20, is it 20 max or something? Because there is another constraint to put in that thing, which is going to be in here. Each de definition of the main routine and it may each contain at most 20 character, okay. So, the definition of it is blah, blah, blah. How did I define the function C? Because that was a complex one. Uh, that's the call. How do I define the functions? Need to split it into smaller parts. So our problem is main routine A, B, C, A, B, C, okay. Yeah, how do I input these? Okay, how do I input these? Oh yeah, here. First, you will be prompted for the main movement routine. Supply the function. Okay, so I'm prompted for this. Then you will be prompted for each movement function. So I can clearly, I don't need to uh, care for the uh, uh, for the, the the cost of each function definition. And do this. Only if they're all valid that way, otherwise it's gonna keep looking for more. Ah that's kind of nice. Also, I have trailing commas. That is not that big of a deal. Um, those are even easier to trim knowing that they work. Okay. Um, I'm going to trim them up here because I like that they are that way. Um, I could give them though the um, ability to go to 21 since there's a trailing comma. And that gives me the same results, but at least it's correct. So 21 to account for trailing comma. And then here, when I do get my result for this A, B, and C, then I can just A on the commas, 
need to do this. On the commas, On the commas. and that's my return value. Oops. Why is it complaining? I thought this was legit. Trim. Where's my trim function? There it is. Oh, that's a direction, a second. Uh huh. Okay. Uh, and the direction is trailing. Oops. There we go. We got our three programs. Now I need to order them in the right order. This part is a bit more annoying. So um, I will this is going to be a OK. Uh, this is going to be the full sequence. I want to break the sequence in terms of A, B, and C. And now comes the really annoying part, which is going to be to recombine A, B, and C to give me the sequence and give me what sequence of A, B, and C is required for that. So recombine A, B, and C into the sequence. And I'm going to do exactly the same kind of logic I've been doing here already, um, which is going to require to try recursively until I find something in all of them. Uh, the difference I have is that there is the ability to use um, a prefix function that lets you know if a string is a prefix of another one. So it's going to be easier to search the patterns by just keeping looking into prefixes and prefixes and prefixes all the time until the two strings are exactly the same. So uh, what was I called? Combine? Is this what I called it? No. Uh, let's see. I called that recombine. Here we go. Uh, and they were in a tuple, so I'm going to just use ABC and sequence. I don't care for building and maintaining a tuple each iteration. ABC string, and I'm going to have a string and an empty accumulator. That's going to be uh, actually, I'm going to need two parts of it, the build so far and what the operations were built so far. So an empty string and a sequence of operations. Okay, so uh, I'm going to use the same exact method of try uh, or not found and catching the exception, which would give me only the sequence is what I expect to have, the sequence of A, B's and C's. And uh, I will reverse it because I assume I'm building it backwards. And I like that pattern for these kinds of recursive searches where multiple functions go deep because it's kind of really annoying to have to carry each, you know, oh, this didn't work, try it again, and just carry that. And that way I just do the straight recursion when I'm at the last function that validates everything it returns. And it's kind of fast as well. It's not the clearest way to do it, um, but I would say it's probably effective. So um, now I'm recombining this. I have the string. I have the string so far, and I have the sequence that I've been building. And here I could probably make use of some spaces. Uh, there we go. 
So to try that one, I will do a first check here where case string and what was the order of the functions and then the prefix is going second. Okay. So actually here I don't care if the string is the same as the string and the sequence is good. So I'm going to just throw the sequence out and that's going to work. Uh, K is a string prefix and string string so far of true. If it's a prefix still, um, let me do a little safety check. So string prefix and ABCD and here I'm looking that ABC is still a prefix. The answer is D. It even returns me what I need to do next. Oh, that's going to be even more effective than I thought. And if it's this way, it's empty. Oh, no match. Okay. That's even nicer than I thought it would be <laughs> because I only need to check which one of A, B, and C fits with that one. Um, and oh, that's if I'm equal is the same. And if it's longer, it's no match. So I don't even need that whole clause. So here, if I'm done, then I can throw the sequence, it's going to be fine. Let me, I'm going to uh, do it here because I know how the accumulator is being used in that function. Uh, if it's no match, then error, I'm guessing that I'm not going to go through this one. And um, then if I have a thing where the prefix is, you know, parts, I don't care. I don't even care what the parts are. I'm just going to brute force the hell of that thing. I only have three candidates, so <laughs> I'm not done. So I'm going to recombine uh, A, B, and C, and string, plus string so far, plus plus A, and I'm going to just, you know, add A to my sequence. I'm going to do it extremely straightforward and not effectively. And the, the search space is tiny. It shouldn't be a problem at all. Um, so I'm just going to eat the cost of doing that. And that's it, right? It, it's that simple, I'm guessing. Uh, where is it? Okay, it's complaining because of me messing up with the syntax. Recombine four is not used. Recombine six is not used. Where is my recombine for then? And it should be used here. Or here. Yeah, well, uh. Here's recompile. Part two, not found. Oh. But that's not fair. Uh. I thought that this wouldn't work. Uh. I don't care. Search all of the freaking things. Am I messing up with the commas somewhere? So I'm searching into A, B, A, C, A, B. They're turning that found. But what I have here is uh, that's the original string. Oh, my original string has a little issue of having a trailing thing at the bottom, but even then. Yeah, and here I need to append them better. So I'm not doing a good job of uh, recombining my sequence. So here, let me recombining by trim trailing. Uh, I'm going to cut that one. Actually, no, I like this one. It's easier to work that way. No, nope, I'm going to keep it. That's fine. I was wondering of where I need to put all my commas and my little stuff. Uh, 
but I'm going to just put it here that way. And now I should at least not break my sequence so fast without being able to find anything. Still not found. Curses. Um, now I'm breaking here, so I've trimmed the output. I've got these three groups. I'm doing R8, L12, R8, R12, blah, blah, blah. That's the full string. And I'm comparing it to. Wait, I have a leading comma in that one as well? Oh, that's the first one. God damn it. So I need fancier rules. Okay. Uh, and, and I'm going to encode my little business rules into that thing here. So append to an empty list and a just gives me a append to a non-empty list so s and a will give me s plus plus common plus plus a and that should be enough here we go we got the sequence okay um that's going to work now the fun thing is plugging that into the freaking computer so I got uh, here, I got my sequence is this. So I like this format. And the thing is, uh, if I recall, I have to spawn a new encode program um, that will drive the thing forwards. And uh, I don't know if when I put it into that mode, I think there's a mode without the uh, IO. But the thing I can do is probably build the map the exact way I'm doing it right now and just run the program. And that's it. Uh, without caring for the thing. I don't know if it's going to output the thing. It's going to return me one giant freaking output that I can use anyway, if I recall properly. So, force vacuum by changing the value in your address zero from one to two. So let's do this. I'm going to try it with just a follow-up program and then we'll see what happens. Um, Here, I will spawn it. That's going to be a new PID, and the program is now going to have the address 0 set to uh, from 1 to 2. I don't care what it was. I just want it done here. And then I have PID 1. The collect result is not going to be needed right now. Then, okay, now that we've got the full solution, it was to receive them, but they need to be provided an ASCII code, blah, blah, blah. Don't give a crap. Okay, the main routine is called only the movement function A, B, or C. First, you will be prompted for the main movement routine. So this is going to be uh, my little function here for my sequence. Instead of doing, where did I build that one? Recombine here. So instead of being A, B, and C, I'm going to, you know, A, B, and C, uh, comma, 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 and I'm going to have to and then I will have leading commas to get rid of, but I could also yeah, think this will give me decent output. Um, let me check that before I drive further with this. Because they want it to be ASCII, I'm going to return it in ASCII right away. Oh, uh, that's going to be Full sequence. But it's the right format. SBC, all right. Okay, uh, back to business. So I get this, I don't care for that one. I will return. Uh, 
you know, I have something that was just flushing the output or something that was collect IO. Because it's going to have huge ass IO is what they told me. So here, first thing they're going to do is prompt for some IO for the main program, which I'm going to send as an IO request to PID1, and it's going to be sequence. Then uh, they are going to prompt for each movement function, A, B, and C. Uh, they may use all that. Oh, finally, before it says provide the string, I need to break that string down differently here. Okay. Uh, PID1 IO uh, to machine, I don't care, A. And I'm going to do it for B and C. And after that, Each moment, let me ask you whether we want to see a continuous video feed. I will provide no, it would be fun, but I don't feel like uh, actually formatting that. So IO, no, and I think they wanted a line break. I'm going to confirm that. And a new line, yep. All right, no, and a new line, then just run the freaking thing. Dude, blah, blah, blah. The movement function of each contained at most 20 characters. I've got that covered. I've got the rest covered. This should all work. Um, before I do that, I need to make sure that my to machine instruction is fine. So I'm going to comment out this bit and do uh, to machine of A and just see what that brings me in terms of content. And so to machine of, uh, what was it, if I have, it's going to be a freaking string, so if I have left, currently I don't have, and then I have the, the string, I will only have L, and then a comma, and then to machine of the string. And that's the end of it. Uh, I will have that, well, not the end of it, because I also have to do that with write, and to machine of an empty list is going to be this. And then the general case where I have to machine of, now you know here I can be even stricter uh, when str is not equal to an empty list because if I'm in a trailing position, I want this to actually happen and be the way it is, so I'm going to just do that. And for any other character in the string, you just keep being and trucking, my friend. All right, not care. That's going to be fine, that's exactly what I needed. So I can kill this line, bring back my comments. See if that runs. If that runs first time around, that's pretty cool. Oh, here we go. That's my collected IO. So it prints the map again. Uh, I'm going to just print the whole thing and get, I'm guessing it's going to be. Uh, yeah. What? Uh. So here I'm getting what is clearly the map being printed out. Um, what is this stuff? This is probably going to be the IO prompting or something. I'm going to, uh, this is all supposed to be a big ASCII string. So instead of doing this, I'm going to IO format W, uh, no, string is what I want for day to have part to and see what I get in there. Expected function name, but gut. Ooh. Okay. So PID one. I I guess. I guess they're not prompting me that much, is it? Uh, how are they going to prompt for it? Just saying expected function. Oh. Well, yeah, they expected the fun. 
do I need to send each one of them individually? And then, oh, I need to have a new line at the end of each one of them. God damn it. Plus, plus, new line. Plus, plus, I guess. Not effective, not giving a crap. Does that work better? Oops. Uh, compile. IO format. What's the... That's the part where I'm no longer having fun now because clearly I have the thing I just need to get the computer to accept it. Um, and this is already what I'm doing at the first level. I'm now doing it at two levels at once where I try to get my computer to get the other computer to do the thing I want. And it's not as fun as it could be. Um, how... <sighs> Yeah, part two. Yeah, you will be prompted. Yes. For each movement function. The main routine may only call the movement functions A, B, or C. Sure. I'm doing this. Call this with the movement. Ask you, yeah, ending with the lists. With a new line, that's done. I call to A twice, and alternate B, C, and routine size, A, A, B, C. That's, that, that's something I cover, but it chokes. It already hates it. Am I supplying it? Y yes, I'm. Uh, I don't. What? I. Okay, uh, I'm going to make a little flush IO function. It's going to just be and I'm going to get a bit more of an interactive prompt because maybe that will play a role. Uh, so here I'm going to flush IO. Flush IO, flush IO, flush IO, flush IO, and flush the freaking IO. And then see what I get in the end. And day part two. Fantastic. Okay. So, we'll go, uh, how am I going to debug that thing? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to print out, oh, wait, uh, yeah, that's the sequence. That's all right. I am going to print out the sequence A, B, and C already in the right machine format. I'm going to try and send them by hand to the thing. And I'm going to also give the PID one and just run that and try to figure out what the crap. Why is it complaining about flush eye? Yeah, flush eye is not used. Don't care. So for part two here, now what I'm getting, I'm going to flush the output. I'm going to get um, this uh, main A, B, C, and the PID. And that's what I have. So here I can flush. I got all the freaking IO. Uh, okay, that's not what I wanted then. And I am going to have to... 
I'm putting them all in one line that is too long and badly formatted because at this point I don't necessarily care. I just want to figure out why my thing is not working. Uh, flush IO0, I'm going to allow myself to call that directly. I'm going to exit normal on the shell, kill whatever was connected. Um, recompile, run this, and then uh, day 17 flush IO. So I got this, I got main. So for this, I can now use PID and send it IO for what was my main program. Oh, screw you. What is it called? I called it P. Jeez. It's probably dead now. No, okay. Um, if I flush the IO. Okay. So let's try again. And this time instead I'm going to send it this, I guess, because why not? Then if I flush the IO, expectant function. Uh, flush IO, then, okay, I'm going to send you, I don't know, A. Then what do I get? Okay, I'm going to have to search a little bit because at this point it no longer makes sense. I, I don't get what the crap it's complaining about. It tells me that it's going to prompt for... Yeah. Because those should I... Bef <sighs> With the new line, that, that, that should be alright. That's exactly what the crap I'm doing. Then you... No, I'm not because... <sighs> Okay, I'm going to search because frankly the input is seems to be broken on that thing. Oh, but I'm not. Am I sending anything else to that process? I'm not. Like, if I just run this and I flush the I/O, I don't get any problem at all. And my main function looks like this. It is exactly what the hell they have been asking about. Uh, where each main function is this, and then a new line. And the commas goes in between, there's no trailing comma, I got the right thing. Uh, uh, wait, wait, no, I did, no, they, they wanted the ASCII code for 10 for a new line. That's what I'm putting them. Um, and if you get the same function twice, yeah. They expected a function name, and I gave them a freaking function name because even if I do it with a single one like that, it chokes. And I tried that, and I'm sending you main just to check properly, and then I flush the IO, and I got, but this is what you asked for, you dipshit program. Does it want it one character at a time? So let's try this, but instead of sending it, I'm going to send you A with nothing. And then if I flush the IO. Okay, uh, I'm going to go look online because like, I've got the solution. It's just I can't input the thing following the instructions they gave me. I just thought of something. Uh, not a thing that anyone gave me, but I just recall that my encode computer likely operates only on ASCII characters directly, right? <laughs> and so, yeah, okay, that's the problem. I'm sending it strings. It's not smart enough to know about things such as strings. Um, so, uh, okay, I'm going to destroy this. I'm going to take this and I'm going to send string from bit one to this and this is going to be the string and I will need to set it in increments. So I'm going to do the same thing for all of them. And 
here it's going to be for PID1, to machine, and here that's going to be this. I need to send something stupider. So, um, send string to PID, and then it's going to be this. Frankly, then we know we're done. And so that's going to be just the OK and send string from PID H and D it's going to be uh, I can do this in a this comprehension <laughs> just that File advent part two. Where's my advent part two? God damn it. Day seventeen P two. Now that's interesting. Is it running? Is it collecting the results? Who knows? Uh Where's my flush IO? I'm going to call flush IO a few times then. Uh, I need to make it sleep for like 100 milliseconds each time, and maybe that's going to give it time or something. And I'm going to flush IO. Let's see what I get for these. I'm going to put a little prompt so I know that I'm getting things. Uh, is it considering that I'm falling into a pit of some sort? Uh, no, because collectile would return. I don't get the result. Um, it's interesting that it never got to the sand string step, though. Um, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do exactly what I had before, which is to... What was the order I had for these? Because I'm getting back to this representation. Uh, this. This. This is taking longer than I thought again. Just because, you, you know, I've, I'm pretty sure I have the right damn program in there. It's just a question of getting it going. Uh, I'm not doing this. This one is just going to be the PID one. And I'm returning this. I need to recompile. So uh, day 17 flush IO. And there I will uh, day 17 that sent string to PID1. That's going to be my main program. My main program. Why did I call them just P again? Why am I always getting confused? And if I flush the IO, I get nothing. Oh, stupid me. Here we go. 
Uh, I'm going to keep that line commented because I might need it again. That would explain why it hangs. I'm not actually sending IO to the freaking thing. <laughs> oh. Sure. Uh, that's the result. And I'm guessing that the, you know, the lists lasts of the result is actually the big gas input and that's it. So that's what they wanted me to do. I'm going to do that. And that's now a clean part two that hopefully passes. That's a lot of space dust. All right, let's see if that fits in beautifully or if it's going to be disappointingly heart crushing. And we've got an even number of stars, which means that it worked. The advent calendar has been successful and it's already on day 18 here and we're back on the planet. So uh, come back next time for the day 18 video of the advent of code 2019 in Erlang, uh, where I get angry to a bunch about a bunch of things and sometimes it's warranted and sometimes it's not. All right, have a good day.